Bless up. It's your boy, Change J.J. Cooper, coming to you live from Asheville, North Carolina. And today the topic is workforce housing. So just to, just to say that, um, got to make space to say that Asheville is a great place to live, especially for those people who are getting their lives together. My man, Brent Bailey, he likes to say uh, that we are resource rich. We have a lot of nonprofits. I think someone said that we were number three per capita for the amount of nonprofits that we have here in uh, Bunker County. But, uh, you know, we have a lot of resources, a lot of programs. And uh, and so a lot of people come here, a lot of halfway houses, a lot of people come here and start their life over, whether it be people that's coming to one of the amazing treatment centers that we have here, or, or maybe it's somebody that's coming here after they get out of prison because they heard that this was a good place to start their life over. Either way it goes, we get a lot of new entrants or what some people call transplants, whatever, you know what I'm saying, that come to this area. But with that being said, people move here and they get involved in the recovery community, make their meetings, they start leveling up, they start building a community of supports, you know, and their lives start getting good. And, and the next thing you know, they're ready to move on, you feel me? And then they run into this roadblock, this roadblock, this housing piece, this housing piece. So let's talk about what one of my clients has recently uh, ran into, and I want to raise some awareness. So first off, let me give honor where honor is due. You know, I would like to thank God the most high for allowing me to do this work that I do advocating for the people, because at the end of the day, it's about the people, you know. And, and so um, I, I'm grateful. Um, I did have a successful referral to Mountain Housing Opportunities that is moving into Maple Crest, which is the new apartments that's uh, up there where Lee Walker Heights was at. You feel me? So I do have a successful referral that's going into an apartment there. And that's great news. So I know that there is hope. There is hope when we start looking at partnerships. We start looking at workforce development programs that have proven track records that these housing providers are willing to partner with and say, you know what, if they're working with you, we'll work with them. So I do want to give honor what honor is due. But I also have to highlight policy. You know, I have to highlight where things are still broken. So I had um, a client come over Saturday. Actually, uh, we had pizza. And so when we met, we had our check in. And so this client of mine, she the job that she works at pays, you know, uh, above a living wage. Uh, uh, the client is making sixteen dollars and fifty cent an hour. This client is making sixteen dollars and fifty cent an hour. And they were denied uh, being able to move into the Mount Housing Opportunities property because they make over the limit. They make over the limit, making $16.50 an hour. This is a person who has a solid uh, uh, work ethic. This is a person who is you know, way far removed from their old behaviors, you dig? So this is a person, this is an ideal person that needs workforce housing advocacy. They make $16.50 an hour. So with that being said, let's let's look at the numbers. $16.50 an hour times 2,080. So that's that's the amount of hours in a full-time year, working full-time, 2,080 hours. Multiply that by $16.50 an hour, and you get uh, 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 $34,320. So the, the yearly salary for my client is $34,320. When you divide that by 12, you get the monthly salary, which that comes up to being $2,860. And so when you look at 30%, because see, affordable housing is when you're not paying no more than 30% of your income. That is where you start looking at what's 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 affordable housing. And so we're talking about affordable housing, but we're talking about workforce housing, you dig? Because we got to have housing for these people if we want them to retain jobs, if we want these people to, to, to thrive. You know what I'm saying? If we're really looking at thriving, then we have to address these, these issues. And so... Uh, the individual making $16.50 an hour or thirty four thousand three hundred twenty dollars a year, 30% uh, of that income, you feel me? They should be paying $858 a month. They shouldn't be paying for it to be affordable housing. They should be paying no more than $858 a month. That's what they should be making going by the 30% of the income rule. But see, this person was told that they make too much to get an apartment with Mountain Housing Opportunities. Now, I want you to look at that and you tell me where can a person go to get an apartment for $858 a month for less than $900 a month without accessing the amazing resource of Mount Housing Opportunities. 
And so it broke my heart when I was sitting in, was sitting with my client because I was in a celebratory mindset because remember I told y'all at the beginning of the video, I had one client who successfully got her apartment at Maplecrest. Let's go. And I'm excited about that. But then when I met with my client on Saturday to talk about goal setting and everything, and I had to check in to see what she had heard back from the apartments, she told me that she was denied because she make too much. And so the question that I asked you is like, when you hear these numbers, $16.50 an hour, you know, $34,320 a year, and you hear that 30, affordable is 30% of that income, you feel me? And, and it's a person, 30% of that income is $858. And that person technically makes too much, but they they make too much to get income based housing, but they don't make enough to to afford housing. Does that get you stirred up? Does that does it does it does it does it piss you off? Does it break your heart? Does it does it make you want to do something about it? Do you want to learn more about advocacy? Do you want to use your voice? If this video has struck a nerve. I challenge you to join us at Just Economics. Come and be a part of the solution. You know, it ain't hard to find us. Check out the website, Just Economics WNC. You feel me? Um, we're just trying to raise awareness. We're trying to help the people. Because Asheville, you know, it is a great place, place to live. But we got to make sure it's a great place to live for all people. Because many of these industries are dependent upon the workforce. And if, we're, if they're dependent upon the workforce, then we have to have solutions as it relates to workforce housing. And so it's about policy change. So if this video struck a nerve, made you want to do something about it, I challenge you to get involved with us at Just Economics. You know, just mercy, just economics, power to the people. Bless up.